Good afternoon, everyone. We are pre-gaming the Ole Miss Rebels and the Vanderbilt Commodores taking place tonight at 6.30 Central, Sirius XM Channel 190. It's on the SEC Network. Um, we're hoping to have Josh Guest, uh, who just popped in from the Grove. We're going to get to him in just a second. Um, we've got John Macon Gillespie, the publisher of the Grove Report, that is going to handle everything that is going on as we sit for you, sit with you for the, I don't know, next 30 minutes to an hour or so. But until then, this is the pregame show edition of the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, as you can see, we have a three box up right now. We have John Macon Gillespie, the publisher of The Grove Report. And we have Joshua Guest, who is live from The Grove, getting ready to go. And we're going to talk about the Vanderbilt game. I know, Josh, you have other responsibilities to get to. What's the atmosphere like in The Grove at the moment? Well, Stephen, earlier today when I was coming in, uh, Highway 6 was worse. And I want to say, by the way, you can see our tent right behind us here, the Q105 tent where we do our show. I'm going to start walking across here in The Grove. But, the traffic on six was terrible. Then I got into town and it was actually pretty easy to get to campus. So uh, not as many people as we've had uh, for the last couple of games. We kind of expected this Vanderbilt. It is homecoming, uh, but nice little atmosphere. Lots and lots and lots of powder blue all over the place. Yeah. Um, what's the vibe that you're picking up on um, from people that you're interacting with around campus? Uh, I would say relaxed, very relaxed, not uptight. Not, you know, there, there was a little bit of angst uh, with some of the earlier games, Arkansas, LSU at home. Uh, but today, I mean, people just kind of strolling around. Nobody seems uptight about anything. Everybody's lo uh, laughing and joking. Just really, really good atmosphere. Yeah. It's, John, you know, John Macon, whenever we talk about what's going on in this game, what, what, are the, what is the main thing that we should be looking at right now for this Ole Miss football team? Uh, I think simply taking care of business, right? I mean, I, I, I know this is kind of a, a big spread. Um, I don't know that Ole Miss wins by 24 or whatever – the spread happens to be. I, I can see maybe a sleepwalking kind of game, but um, if Ole Miss comes out with some fire and some energy today, I think that's a really, really positive sign um, for the next two weeks when you have Texas A&M and Georgia, two, two really big games that are coming up. So uh, if Ole Miss can manage to get up emotionally for this game against a, you know, let's face it, inferior opponent, um, you know, that, that bodes well for the next two weeks. You know, on my show all week, I started off in the week talking about how this was a trap game. And as the week went on, I kind of changed my mind on that, John. And it's not a trap game. It's an opportunity game. Because if Ole Miss handles business against Vanderbilt, all of a sudden you're setting up this big matchup with Texas A&M for a potential Super Bowl-level matchup with the Georgia Bulldogs. And, and if you take that alone, I think Ole Miss is going to show up because of what's at stake this week, John. Yeah, and uh, I think I think you may be right there. And I mean, it's you know, there there is always the danger of playing down a little bit when you know that there's big games coming ahead. Uh, overlooking is kind of what we you know, or looking ahead is kind of what we refer to it as. But um, this team, to me, has not shown that this year. I mean, I think they've shown the mental fortitude to avoid that. Um, and so I think you may be right that they they may come out with, you know, the kind of energy and fire that we have, have kind of been used to seeing from them. Yeah, jo Josh reached out and um, asked me about my shirt earlier this morning. I got it from the College Corner who just opened up a store in the Oxford area. I do want to thank them for get, getting it out quickly to me and getting it to me for this weekend. I know there might have been some issues about that, but it's College Corner, Josh, is where you can pick up this Realtree um, Wave 3 camo shirt. I just left College Corner when I emailed you about it this morning. Uh, they didn't have any larges. They had mediums and uh, skipped up to like 3X. I mean, I had one extra large. Uh, so I think they were. I think it was the largest and extra larges. They were, they were either out of or down to almost none. And so, uh, yeah, I just reached out. And then you, when you sent me the picture, I was like, oh, that's exactly what they have here. So uh, already been shopping at the College Corner in Oxford, the one that opened up. Been at shopping. I've shopped at the other two in the Jackson area. Uh, lived down there when they opened the first one up in the Risen area. So uh, support those guys for sure. 
Yeah, and so let's get into the keys to the game real quick. Um, these, these are the, ga- the keys that I'm kind of pointing to and I've talked about on my show. I think Jackson Dart needs to have a monster day versus Vandy, not necessarily because it's Vandy, but because he needs to take that step to where it just doesn't matter who he's playing. I think the energy has to come from somewhere. Josh has talked about in the Grove, a very relaxed atmosphere. Who will the energy be provided by and avoid the trap of looking to Texas A&M and Georgia, which we've already done on this podcast? So, John, whenever you read that, what do you, what do you think is the likely thing? Uh, like the uh, the most likely to happen of those three keys? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I like Jackson Dart to have a pretty big day because I do think you're right that um, you, you kind of need to see from him. Yes, I mean, he's he's put together really good performances this year, but regardless of who is on the other sideline, just knowing week in and week out what you're going to get from him, continuing to establish that narrative, I think, is really big for his legacy his at Ole Miss. Um, and two, yes, you know, Lane Kiffin talked earlier in the week about uh, needing energy from the fans. And, and I think that was his way of reading between the lines a little bit as, as to saying, hey, I know this is Vanderbilt, but we need people to show up and be loud for this game. Um, because he, he could probably sense or worry about a little bit, you know, would his team be up for playing Vanderbilt? You know, would they be energetic for playing Vanderbilt? Um so I, I think that that's 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 a pretty important one. Josh, what do you think the main key is for Ole Miss in this football game tonight? Um, well, first of all, I want to see a not sloppy game because I think the talent gap between us and Vanderbilt is pretty big, and uh, I think we'll out talent them no matter what. But I want to see a, a sloppy free game, messy free game, and uh, then roll it up on them and make them want to go home at halftime. So well, just yeah, eliminate exactly. mistakes. Yeah, and hopefully by the end of it, Walker um, ha- um, Walker Howard gets some reps at quarterback. Maybe even Austin Simmons gets in the game. I do not know. You know, that, I think that's what everybody is hoping. And with Vanderbilt and with Louisiana Monroe and with Mississippi State coming up, there's going to be some opportunities for that type of stuff to happen. Now, an interesting thing to think of, is my prediction for the game, all right? My prediction for the game is 41 to 14. This is the way I think it's going to go. I think it's a situation, honestly, where Vandy's going to score late. It's going to be pretty well a boat race. John, what do you think the prediction level will be for this football game? Uh, I gave it 38-14 on the site. Uh, you can go check out our staff predictions at thegrovereport.com, but – um. I see 38-14. I I think the game will – I don't think it will ever feel close. Um, But, you know, until I see a sloppy free performance in a game like this, I'm kind of leaning that way. But, I mean, you you can't really complain if you're an Ole Miss fan about a 38-14 win, regardless of who it is. Um, That's kind of where I'm leaning because I I do think the talent gap is very much there. And I think Ole Miss, regardless of how sloppy the game is, will just out-talent Vanderbilt and win by multiple scores. So, um, real quick before we move on to Josh, um, the Indiana-Penn State game. Indiana's down by three points to Penn State. They're on Penn State's 20-yard line with 425 to go in the game. Um, So, this is – I think this is a situation where Penn State, even if they win this game and close this out, they have to drop. Now, prediction-wise, Josh, how do you feel this game is going to go? Well, I'm, I'm hoping for that sloppy free game. And so my prediction is more of a hope than anything. I'm, I'm uh, sort of like John here that I haven't seen it. And, and winning by one is enough. Just win the game. Just don't, nobody will remember this as long as we win. And so, uh, but I'm, I'm still hoping for my 63 10 that I said. I know that's big. I know it's a big, big number. Uh, but I'm hoping that, you know, Zachary Franklin or Trey Harris or, or Dayton with somebody goes off for, you know, 250 and uh, three touches maybe or something like that through the air from, from Jackson Dart and maybe even Walker Howard. All right. Um, real quick before I go um, on to what to watch for, I want to let everybody know about um, our athletic brewing. And, you know, today is the time for the game changer of the week in athleticbrewingcompany.com. I do want everybody to know that Lane Kiffin is changing the game 
for our much like the athletic brewing company has changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Lane Kiffin has a chance to raise the level of the program with a win on Saturday versus the Vanderbilt Commodores. Not because of the Vanderbilt Commodores, because of what this means for the games after it. Just like that, Athletic Brewing Company, they brew over 50 styles of craft non-alcoholic beer, including IPAs, Golden, Sours, and more. And you can find their non-alcoholic brews at a store near you, or you can buy them online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use Locked On um, College. Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions, and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. Also, I want to let you know that you shouldn't stress out if you're trying to go to a ball game. You know, it's always weird. I remember whenever I tried to get into the Alabama game in 2014, I was stressful trying to find a ticket for that. You shouldn't have to worry about that. Game time app eliminates that stress and if you get the game time app or go to game time co you can do that because they have last minute tickets flash deals zone deals they're easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area you got views from all the seats from the venue all in prices show your total up front no hidden fees and game times guarantee means you'll always get the best price so if you find tickets in the same row and section for less money you get rehunted 110 percent of your money so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Something tells me that'll come in handy next weekend. Term supply again. Create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, so lots of stuff going on. And we're going to get to that. And, you know, Chris Wilkes watching live from the Grove. It's a beautiful day in Oxford. Hey, Chris, find Josh in the Grove, and he may be able to come by your tent. So thank you very much for watching right now. So let's look at what to watch for in this game, because I do think this is a situation that there is some things that you need to watch for. And... Why Ole Miss wins the game and what to watch for is I think for Jackson Dart to have true legacy games at Texas A&M and Georgia, he must play well. This is real similar to a key that I talked about earlier in the day. And either Trey Harris or Zakari Franklin has to go off. Much, much the reason I think that's going to happen is because Zakari Franklin needs to go off. They need to force feed him a little bit. And I don't think Vanderbilt will be able to keep up enough to score in the game. Now, John, what do you think about these three keys? Anything jump out at you? Yeah, I, I like the term you use, force feed, for Zakari. Um, I like that a lot because obviously the injury issues for him, you know, earlier in the season has, I think, kind of slowed down his um, ability to make a really big impact in this offense. And so uh, – you know, we, we all expected big things from Zakari coming into the season. I mean, I think he was preseason all SEC and all kind of stuff before he even took a snap. So uh, he he was expected to make a big impact. I think his impact will be important down the stretch and kind of getting those wheels greased or those gears greased, those wheels in motion a little bit today against Vanderbilt could be very important. Get him the ball, get him some touches. And, I mean, that takes some of the load off of Trey Harris, too, right, who is obviously Jackson Dart's favorite target. Take some of that load off of him. Make sure he's able to be healthy against A&M in Georgia. Josh, which which of these reasons why I think Ole Miss will win stands out to you? Uh, that Vanderbilt can't score enough, uh, and that goes to the talent gap. I mean, and, and not only the talent gap, but we have Pete Golden. And, I'm, I mean, do I need to say more? Because they may hit an explosive play. Ken Seals um, – whom you have recused your uh, president of the fan club for today, uh, may throw a touchdown. But it will be his last uh, because Pete Golding will make sure of it. And so uh, and, and of this, at this point, I have full confidence. Uh, Pete Golding has done the job this year, and I think he's going to continue doing the job because he knows the pieces he has. He knows how to put them in the right places. And then those guys go out and execute because he, they believe their coach believes in them. And so uh, I just think that's a pretty amazing thing, and uh, they just can't score enough. I, and, and I, I honestly believe that it's it's one of those things where on my cold open of my show that I said, you know, Ole Miss is going to defeat Vandy because Ole Miss has better football players than Vandy. And it's like I'm 
not exactly reinventing the wheel with that take. And it sounds like a, I'm discounting exactly what's going to happen. But at some point, John, you kind of have to be real with who you're dealing with. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do think that's a good way to put it. But I mean, the, the, I, I think, I think, and this, this is kind of a point that I've, I've come to in my mind a little bit that in the current landscape of college athletics with the way NIL is going, you know, not only do I think Vanderbilt won't be able to keep up on the field today, I don't think they'll be able to keep up in that aspect of things either moving forward. Um, you know, I don't have any kind of inside source at Vanderbilt or anything like that, but it's, I, I don't know. It's it with, with the way that college athletics are changing and the way the league is expanding. That's something I'm going to be very interested to see moving forward is how they're able to try to keep pace in sports other than baseball. Yeah. And, and, and it's going to be really interesting about that because you have a situation with Vanderbilt and um, with Mississippi state with, um, honestly, teams like Auburn, where Auburn's trying really hard, but Auburn's not there at the moment. South Carolina, they're trying really hard, but they're not really there at the moment. Um, Indiana tied the game up with Penn State. Um, something happened. There were there were ten, Penn State fans are celebrating, so I, I don't know what's going on. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a second. But there are certain teams in the SEC that are going to have trouble keeping up because they're just not early adopters to this NIL, this new world that is out there. And if, if that happens, you're going to have problems with what's going on, John. Yeah, and it's it's almost the phrase adapt or die a little bit. I think that's kind of what we're going to see uh, in, in the years ahead with um, – you know, programs, especially in the SEC, since that's kind of what we're talking about. But uh, Ole Miss seems to be at the forefront of this in a good way. Uh, and I think that that's very positive momentum if you're an Ole Miss fan, because that means you can, one, get good players and two, keep them. OK, I think that's huge and what the collective has been able to do in that regard. But, um, you know, if you if you talk to people around the country or, or around the league or whatever, a lot of schools are not in that same boat right now. I mean, they, they just don't have that same momentum that Ole Miss and some of the, some of the bigger programs in the conference have. And um, obviously Vanderbilt falls in that boat right now. You know, Josh, uh, tell people yeah. <laughs> uh, what you're doing right now and give everybody an update on what the hottie po hottie toddy potty situation is. Um, I'm walking back over here to where I can see it now. There is no line currently. But what happens is uh, about two hours before the game when they do the walkthrough in the Grove, everybody comes over, you know, been in the Grove for a while. They've had a few things to drink maybe, uh, you know, water and, and Pepsi and that kind of stuff. And then, uh, you know, they line the bathroom up. So right now it's good. If you're, if you're in the Grove and you need to go to the hottie totty potty, no line right now. Um, but probably about two hours from now, there'll probably be a 30 to 40 minute wait on today, I would say. I would say it would not quite get to an hour. So, But I was just walking through some tents, kind of showing some people that and, Earlier, you could see Colonel Reb over my shoulder or the spirit or the ghost of him or whomever over under the Walk of Champions uh, taking pictures. So, uh, anyway. It, it's, it, it's, it's weird to me that that guy is still there. And after 20 years, it's, it's bizarre. It, it, and I wonder if they wash that costume. I, th I, think that would, I think that would take some of the magic out of it if they did wash it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it is the sweat that's on the inside the same one that was roaming the sideline when Eli was the quarterback? It, I hope so. It, it, oh, man, it, 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 it's, it's a weird situation. Okay, Josh, tell everybody exactly what you're doing in your other job and what's going on right now and how they can continue listening to you guys. All right, especially people who are coming into town right now. We do traffic reports. Uh, that's the big thing we do. We're on the uh, Ben Atkins tailgate show from in front of Farley Hall on the Grove. And starting uh, 2 30s when the show hit, Domino's is already on the table. We will have free Domino's for two hours from 2 30 to 4 30. And so somebody can come by and get some pizza if they want it. Uh, we do have some people who come by and get a uh, piece or two here and a piece or two there a little bit. And so, uh, but we'll, we'll be doing that now for the next couple of hours in front of Farley Hall. And um, there was something else I was going to tell you. And it all of a sudden left. That's what happens when you get old. Everything starts leaving your mind. So I uh, can't quite remember what I was going to say. Oh, it's all good. You guys are doing a fantastic job and you're getting ready to get uh, 
get to work and everything get going. So thank you so much, Joshua, and we'll we'll catch you next week, bud. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Go Rebels. All right, John Macon. We talked about the prevent and predictions. Um, Penn State scored a touchdown to go up um, 31 to 24. Um, Texas A&M just scored a touchdown to go up two scores. Kansas is about to kick a field goal to cut it to 20 to 21 to 20. And Florida State's just boat racing. Um, Wake Forest at the moment. That's my box. Speaking of boat racing, I don't know if you saw on one of the bottom tickers or anything what SMU did to Tulsa today. I know that's not really in our footprint. You know, with them bouncing to the ACC here soon, it kind of is. Um, last I saw, it was sixty-six to three. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, they woke up and chose violence this morning. They did. They did. They <laughs> they they absolutely did. Woke up on that side of the bed this morning. Oh, and yeah, it, it, it's absolutely nuts. Um, John Keith Garner just said the uh, Penn State just scored. Yeah, Penn State's up thirty-one to twenty-four. So you got that one last drive where Indiana is trying to put it together. I do not like Indiana's chances on this last second drive. If it does happen, they're not losing in overtime. This is one of those situations. If the road team goes down and ties the game up at the end, Indiana's not losing this football game. But I do not like Indiana's odds at the moment to do this drive. Now, and and you are right that um, you're a two and five team who's going in to play one of the top ten programs in the country. Uh, yeah, if you score here, you go for two. I mean, you you don't. Oh, uh, they don't. just. Strip sacked and the ball rolled through the end zone. And so Penn State got a safety. So, you know, like okay, I said, cool. I, I did not like Indiana's chances of getting this going to begin with. No. Okay, cool. So I'm flipping over to Oklahoma, Kansas then, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those weird situations. I think Spencer Rattler just backwards passed it and AM just inexplicably stopped working at the moment. Yeah. Somebody said, Indiana just fumbled safety. Not only that, he fumbled and, and it rolled for like 30 yards out of the back of the end zone. Yeah, uh, that's 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 a beautiful play. Yeah, it, it's Big Ten football is what it is. And and I thought about this talking to my wife today, that James Franklin, when he first got to Penn State, the offense was not necessarily prolific, but it was very anti-Big Ten-like. Mm-hmm. And then over the time of him being there, now his offense does not look much better than Iowa's does as far as what they're doing. It's like everything just trends that direction. Yeah, it's – one okay, so there's there's two ways I can think to look at it. One, the Big Ten is contagious, mm. maybe. It's almost like a virus. Um, I say as I'm sick today, that's fun. But um, – Two, it, it may just be that maybe his offense hasn't adapted while the defenses have to his scheme. Uh, that's probably the more likely scenario because, you know, the Big Ten is not an infection in reality. But um, that that's probably what's happened, in my opinion, is that defenses have, have learned to scheme around him and he just hasn't adapted yet. Yeah, um, a, um, Carolina just fumbled. South Carolina is not good. It, They're not. I, I, I don't know why in the preseason everybody thought that they were going to be this really good team. and They're just not a good football team. Yeah, and uh, Spencer has had a rough day today. I think he's had three or four intentional grounding penalties, mm. which is an ungodly amount of numbers for, like, even a season, you know, and he's had that today. Uh, that's, that's rough. And – I think he's a good quarterback. I really do. But he, they're not a good football team, and uh, they'll probably, um, they'll probably give Beamer a little bit of time. But another year like this, and that that clock gets real close to hitting zero. And it's just weird. And and I understand. I'm gonna bring up this point real quick, and we're gonna do a commercial and come back and talk about it a little bit. But what is the score line? What does the score need to be? What's the six, um, the thing that Jackson Dart gets out of the game, moves on to Texas A&M? We get Spencer Sanders, see Walker Han- Howard, see those players play a role in this football game. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But right now, I do want to let you know about, well, a lot of stuff. It takes me a little time to get to it. But I do want to let you know about prize picks. Prize picks is the most fun that I've had winning up to 25 times my money. This football season, you just select two or more players. You just pick more or less than their projected stats, and place your entry. Prize Picks has weekly promotions that can lead to big playoffs like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player protections 
up to 25% to provide even more value. Prize Picks now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits into your account every football season. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Prizepicks.com slash locked on college. Use promo code locked on college, all one word, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E, for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports may easy. And also tonight, the Rebels play the Vanderbilt Commodores tonight at 6 30 Central Time. We have your opportunity to listen to David Kellum and the Rebels' hometown crew. If you do not have Super Talk, the Ole Miss can continue their run. You can catch every play of that home team broadcast with SiriusXM on Channel 190 or on the SXM app, searching Ole Miss Rebels. So, John, we're going to um, open this up a little bit so everybody can comment about what's going on and, and, and talk about that. But what is these, what does Ole Miss need to do? to get Jackson Dart out of the game. What does this game need to look like for Jackson Dart to come out of the game, take his little time off, get ready for Texas A&M, and the next two weeks are going to be absolutely massive for Ole Miss football? I mean, if Ole Miss is up by three scores in the second half, I mean, I think you see him come out of the game probably. Uh, Two scores maybe if it's late, but uh, I think, well, Kansas, okay. Sorry, I got a little distracted there. Um yeah, I think three scores in the second half and he comes out because I, th- I think Kiffin and company know um, what lies ahead and they just don't want to risk injuring, for lack of a better term, their franchise quarterback um, in a game like this. So uh, I think he would come out and we would say – now, after that, it would be interesting to see who we see come in, whether it be Spencer Sanders or Walker Howard or both. Um, that, 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 to me, would be a pretty interesting storyline. Yeah, just by the way, Kansas is going for two for a chance to go up 28 to 21 on number number six, Oklahoma. Um, Kansas fans are chanting SEC at um, Oklahoma, which it doesn't matter because all that does is remind Oklahoma that no matter what this game ends up like, Oklahoma is going to a better situation. That's true. Yeah, and, and and it's like you're chanting that nobody is going to remember that you lost to Kansas this year. Nobody. Every the every bit of the talking point is going to be about Oklahoma going to the SEC, and I just don't know why you need to do that. It, 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 that's silly. Um, and I I will say too, um, this is a complete side note. I really like this uniform matchup in this one, actually. I, Kansas's uniforms are low key good this year. They're, they're sneaky good. They they improved yeah. them a lot. Um, and I. The simpler, the better is usually the case when it comes to uniforms like that. And Kansas Kansas got it right, I think. Yeah, the giant Kansas across the front. Normally, I'm not mm-hmm. a huge fan of the – whenever you get put huge letters across the front. But I like that. I like the font. I like everything that's going on with Kansas uniform. I mean, um, they've, they've got it going on after being the laughing stock of college football for about 10 years. I mean, if, if, if this score were to hold, and it probably won't, um, I mean, Kansas is bowl eligible with a win mm-hmm. in this one. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's big. It's absolutely nuts. And Oklahoma is going to go drop from six to probably 14 or 15, losing to an unranked team on the road. And this is before the first ever college football rankings for the 2023 season. Yeah, that comes out Tuesday, I believe. Right? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Tuesday night that happens. And this, this is a big situation, a big – Honestly, this is a big result right now for Ole Miss as Ole Miss looks to creep towards that top 10 in the college football playoff rankings. Yeah, and, uh, you know, depending on – I mean, Penn State's going to win, but depending on kind of what happens there with them. They need um, to drop too. The they, yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, whatever happens here with Oklahoma, I mean, those are those are two games in this early window that impact Ole Miss's standing. So, uh, you know. It'll it'll be interesting to see, and I always like that that first um, release of the playoff poll. Uh, I don't know why it's kind of like a holiday for me, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I, I always look forward to that every year, and it's it's on Halloween this year, which is fun, I guess. But uh, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see, and uh, that that's another reason why I think this game is important for Ole Miss is because I, I don't know that. This season, style points matter in college football that much. 
Um, I think they do to an extent, but a, a lot of times it feels like it's almost survive in advance for some teams. Um, but if you can put up some style points against an inferior opponent today, uh, that that impresses for ranking purposes, I think, with with the first installment of the CFP poll coming out next week. Yeah, and, and the first installment is the one that completely sets the tone for it. It is, and, yeah. And, and people always talk about the AP poll does, is meaningless. It doesn't matter. Well, it matters in this case. Um, because at the beginning of the year, the narrative got established that the Pac-10 was extremely up and the SEC was down. And then as teams started to fall by the wayside and we saw that the Pac-10 is probably not as up as we thought they were, all of a sudden, everybody, that narrative still persisted, the one that was created by the AP poll, and that's going to go into these college football playoff rankings. And like if Utah loses to Oregon, it, they might not drop as far as they normally would because they're getting the benefit of the doubt, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And uh, I, obviously it's a different system as to how those two polls are put together, but I do think that they impact one another mm-hmm. because that that tone is set early by the AP poll. And I, I think that, look, bias exists everywhere, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, even in journalism, I mean, it's impossible to be 100% bias free. That's something I learned in school uh, because we're human. So things you see, you know, that committee members may see in the AP poll is going to influence what they put for the CFP poll, if that makes sense, how I phrased that. Um, so, you know, I, I I personally understand why they, they wait so late to put out the CFP poll, but, um, you know, it does, it does make for interesting talking points because I think the AP poll influences it. Yeah, it absolutely does. And let's look real quick at this. This is the um, betting odds from FanDuel at the moment. Um, And I need to get this off of there real quick. Sorry about that. Um, And I can get that off as well. And that'll be nice, clean to look at. But Ole Miss, 24 and a half point favorite. It hasn't really moved. And if you look at the betting numbers, although the spread is moving, it was at like 53% for Ole Miss going into this day. So there's all, there's a lot of money coming in on Ole Miss at the moment and bets and actually volume. But Ole Miss, 24 and a half point line, it's been fairly stable. The over-under has actually gone down from like 64 and a half to 62. What, what does this spread tell you at the moment? Uh, I think it's, I think it's a big number. Um, and I think people are a little wary. I I think, I think a lot of betters are probably thinking kind of like we are that, Hey, is Ole Miss going to sleepwalk through this thing? I don't think there's any doubt that Ole Miss is going to win the game, you know, from a betting perspective, but, um, thinking, okay, is Ole Miss going to be as up for this game knowing that A&M and Georgia is on the horizon and will they be able to cover the 24 and a half is, is basically kind of what it's telling me because um, if it's 50, 50 on those bets to me, that's kind of the story it tells. If you look at these score odds from Vegas, like Ole Miss 31, 17, pretty decent odds, 31 to 24. There, a lot of lines has Ole Miss right around that point, 35 mm-hmm. to 17. I, I, I I think they think Ole Miss is going to be able to score 35 to 38 points in this game. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, common sense would dictate that as well. I mean, if Ole Miss is firing on all cylinders offensively, they should have no problem doing that. Yes. Um, 41 to 14, by the way, my pick is the lowest odds that I've seen so far. So, Well, see, look I, at you. You, yeah, you, should, I, you should work in Vegas. Yeah, seriously. They should, they should, they should hook me up. Yeah. But – if you if you look at what's going on now, is it, it, it's just a situation to where I think Ole Miss has a chance to do what needs to be done, and for lack of a better word, take care of business. Sorry about that. There he is. I was fixing to take over the ship. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, 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 I hit the wrong button. Um, I do that all the time, man. Yeah, that's, it is like, well, that's that's crazy. We talk but about it, how much easier life is with technology, but yet none of us know what we're doing. Is what no, it no, really no, 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 yeah. it, no. It, it's basically all of technology. We're trying to just not screw things up. Absolutely. Um, so 
we're in a situation where I think that Ole Miss, they need to play this game like look like a top 10 team, in they my do. opinion. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's just time for them to do that. They they don't need to struggle. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I can tell you in this, this last edition of the Ole Miss Vandy game, something weird is going to go on. It might be a situation that Ole Miss wins 31 to six or something like that. And I do expect Ole Miss to throw the ball all over the field and they are going to force field, feed Sakari Franklin. Yeah. I, I think, I, I mean, that to, to me, that's the recipe, right? Is um, just backyard football, this thing almost, just, just throw it everywhere. Um, and I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, I think Quinshawn and, and Bentley will get their their share of touches as well, but uh, I think this 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 will be a game where Jackson Dart, if everything goes according to plan, has a really good stat line at the end of at the end of the day. Um, yeah, and and this is going to be, the, in my opinion, the game that Zachary Franklin. Everybody's like, okay, there he is. Yeah. Apparently, well, I mean, I, just scored a touchdown. By the way, to make it I did see that. Yeah, and I, and I think that. Um. Everybody understands what Zakari is capable of, but I do think you can definitely see that some it, it, it's been kind of knocking the rust off a little bit these last few weeks. So this game can definitely be poised to be a breakout game for him. Yeah, it's it's, it's a timing thing more than um, a, a good player type situation. When like the interception against Auburn, that was a timing situation. There was mm-hmm. an overthrow that was absolutely a timing um, issue. And as Jackson Dart and Zachary Franklin becomes more familiar with each other, it's going to get better. But it's at the point where it needs to get better after the Vanderbilt game. This is the last step because once you get to what's after this, it's real. It's do or die time. You no longer have that pad of, hey, you can get this done slowly and slowly build it to another point. No, you need to be good and ready to go going into the Georgia and Texas A&M games. It's just the way it is. Yep. I agree 100%. So, so um, thanks, everybody, for watching the show. Um, I do want to thank everybody for subscribing to the podcast. We're over 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. And if you're not a subscriber, please do. If you are a subscriber, tell a friend. And if you listen to the program on something other than YouTube, go to the YouTube page and subscribe. We'd appreciate that. Because once we get to 6,000 subscribers, Live remotes get on the table. If Ole Miss goes to the Citrus Bowl, the Orange Bowl, um, the Under Armour All-American game, whenever I go to cover that, I can do remotes from that area. Um, That's at 6,000 subscribers. Tuesday night, um, we are going to do the first Shark Tank live stream um, that we will get on there and have a good good time. It's basically what our Discord lives have been recently, but we're going to start doing it on YouTube. And if I have to be on the playoff show, which is possible at the moment. Um, It'll be delayed a little bit, but we'll still do it. But I may have to do that one first. So, John, any final thoughts before we get out of here? No, um, I'm excited. I'm uh, As I tweeted a little while ago, I'm a little under the weather today, so I won't be in Oxford in person. Um, But uh, Ben King is going to be there in the box for us, and he's going to do a really good job, as, as he always does. And me and him and other people on staff will will have plenty of thoughts and analysis at the Grove Report.com whenever whenever it's all said and done. You know, that's that's actually the good thing. You know, used to back in the day they needed to send somebody to go to the games because you couldn't see the games. But now mm-hmm. everything's on TV. I mean, there's a chance they're going to stream the exhibition game um for basketball. And you know, you can see everything. And other than soaking in the atmosphere of what's going on, and we can do that with what, what you saw with Josh Guest earlier today and with people in there, you do not have to be in the city to actually cover the team because you can see everything. Yeah, Weird. right. And and it's uh, that's that's one of the benefits of this job because, um, you know, not, not to just do too much of how the sausage is made, but, I mean, technology does make our jobs easier, like we going back to that talking point, because on days where – I'm not feeling great or I have something going on, you know, new baby sister in the family and everything. If I need to be home, I can be home and still do my job. Um, so it's, it's good for, it's good for days like today. So, all right, before we get out of here, I do want to thank everybody that has subscribed and everything and is 
we are in the process of taking this channel from what it was to what it will be. And so that's the reason it looks a little bit different now. And we're always tweaking and things like that. But tune in immediately after the game for the post-game show. It'll be just me. And I'll either be unbelievably elated or unbelievably depressed. I'll basically be the mouthpiece of the Ole Miss fan base. And um, tune in for that. Tune in Tuesday for the Shark Tank live stream. Depending on the college football playoff release and if I need to be on it. And also SEC After Dark's channel. Um, you can catch us there if you're watching us this program on SEC After Dark. You can do that. Subscribe to that channel as well. We got a lot of stuff, John. I got a lot of stuff I'm plugging at the moment. And yeah, I, I don't I don't know about about everything right now. Yeah. I'm just it's, I'm uh, busy. I'm just scatterbrained. Yeah. Well that's uh, on on one hand, that's a good place to be, right? I mean, because it's it's kind of what we enjoy doing, so it's yeah. hard to complain about that. So, um, everybody, thank you very much for tuning in, and we will see you a little bit later on the post game show. Take care. <laughs>